next management with us. Sorry. Absolutely. And Axo Noble is the stock on our radar, the maker of Dulux paints. Now, the performance was more or less in line with street estimates and it was a little muted the quarter gone by. The revenue growth was just about 2 to 2.5%. Yeah, there we go, 2.3% on the upside. Gross margin, however, did expand and profit also saw a fair amount of growth. We have Rajiv Rajgopal, chairman and MD of the company with us right now. Uh, Mr. Rajgopal, thank you so much for joining in. Let's start by talking about top line growth first. So, you know, fourth quarter, 2.3%. Just take us through the, the consumption trends. What was the volume growth, first of all, in the fourth quarter? And FY25, I mean, are you expecting uh, things to improve? What's the volume expectation for the year as a whole? Thank you. Thank you, Surabhi. Good morning to you and all your viewers. Uh, first and foremost, yes, I think it's 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 very misleading because you see headlines. We've had a solid volume growth. The volume growths have started coming. Our volume growths were almost to the tune of 15%. Now, there are two reasons why you're seeing, hence, the revenue growth of 2.3%. One, the industry has seen a price drop. As you know, between December and January, which is reflected in this quarter gone by, of almost, for, in, for us, almost about 4.5%, right? So that's one. The second is the mix has been adverse. And I think you've seen it in all the industry results that have come in, that the, uh, for us, it's so far, and we've seen it in the full year, the premium category actually outgrew. But if you look at the quarter gone by, it's basically the mid-market, the mass, and the economy, uh, et cetera, which have done very well. As a result, you're seeing the dilution of the mix, which is the reason that you've seen the revenue, particularly from a paints perspective, the paints vertical perspective. Similarly, we've seen similar trends happening in a in our coatings vertical, particularly if you look at automotive, uh, you know, we are not in the OEM, so we've not had that dramatic jump that some of the players who are in the OEM business would have seen. Uh, in the aftermarket, we've seen uh, in, in that category, we, our premium has grown, but our mass has been a little curtailed. So we've had a bit of a mixed bag in the last quarter. Suffice to say that, uh, you know, I think the trend is right because a double, I'm really looking at underlying volume growth. And both, you know, for the quarter and the full year, the underlying volume growth uh, for the company has been double digit. That's fantastic. So you're saying 15% volume growth in Q4. That's and right. uh, what was the, the total number put together for FY24? And then, you know, we can then discuss FY25. It's almost 10%, you know, so it's for the full year. And uh, that's the reason why we believe that we are slowly coming back. See, you must realize as far as Axonobel is concerned in the paint side of the business, we were at significant premiums to the market player last year this time. And one of the things that we wanted to do is to correct that premium, right, uh, and, and move from a price-led revenue strategy to a volume-led revenue strategy for the, for the next two, three years, because that's important and an imperative given what's going to happen in the paints industry. But what about the price decline? Just a quick final question to complete the point that you made. I, I think you mentioned that you the price decline in Q4 was 4.5%, right? So that, for your uh, investors, is going to be a slightly worrying trend. Is that continuing into the first quarter? What are the factors at play here? Well, look, uh, you know, the industry had taken a price drop. And obviously, given our market share, we you know, and the fact that we've gained market share in a full year, period. Uh, we were very clear that we are going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that we continue and build uh, and consolidate our market position. Now, is it a worrying trend to your question? I don't think so. I think the, you know, uh, the one of the reasons we could afford to do that, and you've seen it in the results, you've seen that, you know, our EBIT margins have actually grown uh, in the quarter Q4 and also in the full year significantly is because of the fact that the raw material was benign. Now things are sort of flattening and moving up a bit. So I don't see that happening further. And we will see. We will have to take, you know, as they say, one ball at a time and play the match. Uh, but we are very clear we are going to consolidate and build our market position. If you look at our EBIT margins, Surabhi, we are almost at a 14 15%. Remember, this is including royalty. Yeah, so effectively, when you look at the market, we are virtually number two in terms of the shape of the business. Uh, compared to, you know, even some of the larger players. And that's in, that's in a good shape. If you also Sorry. look at... Uh, Rajiv, uh, hi. Uh, sorry, we just... Uh, sorry sorry for the interruption. Just let me get, get a question in. For F525, what kind of vol uh, volume growth uh, should we pencil in? And, Double digit. Uh, what, so, uh, it could be uh, 10%, it could be uh, anything. I mean, <laughs> would, would it be... <laughs> where, will, where will you be? Yeah. 12 to 15%. Okay. 12 to 15 percent volume growth. And what about margins, uh, Rajiv? I mean, uh, because you're saying that you'll focus on volumes now. And we've heard this from Berger. We've heard this from Asian Pains that, you know, uh, essentially it's going to be volumes. I mean, the volume uh, value differential uh, varies between 2 and 5, 6 percent. 
Uh, so yeah, just wanted correct. to get your sense. Yeah. You're right. Look, the volume is going to be about 12 to 15. The revenue will be in the high single digits. Now, whether it's going to be 8, 9, or we touch 10, I think that's obviously a function of, you know, how we implement some of the strategies that we are un sort of unfurling. Yeah. So that's that's the ballpark where it is there. That's that's how we see the full year, uh, you know, 25 sort of pan. Okay, all right. Hi, Rajiv. Good morning and good to see you. And so going by the numbers you're giving us, volume growth of 12 to 15 percent, high single digit revenue growth means you're factoring in another price cut of around 3 to 4 percent for the year, right? Well, we are not factoring in a price cut because remember that the price drops that were taken were taken in December and in January. So that's going to pan out till December this year, right? Uh, and, and then we will have to look at, but what I'm factoring in is the fact that there could be a possibly a bit of a mix, slight mix change. Remember for us, we are a we are a premium brand. Uh, we are a premium large town brand, and obviously, what we've been doing, and I've been talking to all of you, yourself, Prashant, uh, Sonia, and Surubi over the last, is that we are trying to get into smaller towns. We've now touched 5,000 towns, and we are moving to 5,500. So obviously, as you go into smaller towns, the mix will slightly change. It will have a higher constituent of you know economy and mass. As I said, our focus is to drive and consolidate market share. We are. Yes. A, we're not going to let go of the India market. It's a critical market for Adzo Nobel Global now. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so we're going to fight tooth and nail and make sure we consolidate and grow our market share. We've done that in the full year. In fact, we've gone got about a 0.3% market share gain in the full year that's just ended. So what's the market share right now? If we could quickly uh, get are, that number. We are now crossing almost about 4.6, 4.7%. We were at 4.2. We are really building it back. My belief is mm. that, look, I think we want to, in the pain side of the business, we want to take it to at least a five, five and a half in the next couple of years. And we believe that yeah. we will, because our products are good, our biggest yes. belief is that we've got the best product in the industry. Okay, all right, Rajiv, this is Nigel on this side. It's been good speaking to you. Thanks a lot for joining in and giving us all those details. We'll hold you to these numbers. Absolutely. For the time being, well, we'll slip into a short break. Come back, we focus on the commodity space. Manisha is waiting for us.